What's up, everybody? So I wanted to do a updated review on RipX uh, Deep Audio. So they came out with a brand new update. So I figured it'd be fair to kind of uh, give my honest opinion on it. So I, as an audio engineer and you know sound designer, I'm always looking for the new tools and fun tools to kind of help with editing audio. And I briefly covered this last time where I was talking about how it's similar to Isotope RX. Um, and honestly, it's kind of a hybrid between that and Melodyne. And that's not a knock on any of those programs or this one. It's just what my observations are of this program. So there are a lot of things I like about it. And there are some things I think that can be improved or needed to be added, um, hopefully in future releases. So in this example, I'm going to be using a song by Stompbox Music called Day and Night. And I... First off, I want to say, um, you know, all credit is given to the artists and creators of the of the music itself and, uh, you know, to this uh, application. I'm not sponsored by anybody. I'm just doing this because I want to. So I wish they had a history button like how Isotope has where you can kind of go back in time and listen to the original. They do not. So I'm just going to have to play this separately. So here's a uh, brief clip of the Day and Night song by Stompbox Music. is softer than silent night her eyes are brighter than the sky so i'll just have to kind of go between the original and this so you can kind of hear the difference so the main tools i used for this one are a uh, main window i should say i focused on was just this one you see in front of you here so i split everything up uh, by running it through its rip program or uh, algorithm and it took around 20 minutes or so to rip at a high quality uh, for my computer itself this is kind of an older machine uh, so yours might be a little faster or slower depending on how, you know how yours uh, runs so right off top it did an amazing job at separating all the voice and the instruments uh, so I want to give credit to that there are a few things I wish it had though in the tools menu up top uh, similar to Melodyne, how you can select a single note. And I wish there was an option to adjust the gain directly from here. You can go into the levels option here and kind of do that where you're kind of selecting, making it quieter, louder. But it doesn't seem that like it's for me, it's just. I like seeing everything in one space and having to go to this little bar up here is, is kind of inconvenient for me personally. Um, but I played around with that. And the main thing I, I used for this example also was their harmony option. So this is a really cool one. So it changes it by thirds. So you can easily create harmonies literally by clicking one button, dragging the slider up or down. So I can go an octave up, an octave down. So it's really cool. It sounds pretty, um, I'd say pretty organic to me. It sounds really similar to Melodyne. The one drawback though is you can't edit that harmony independently. So it's it's tied to this, like how it is. So I can't adjust the volume on the harmony. I can't add a different uh, vibrato on that harmony itself, uh, which is kind of a downer for me because that would have been great. Um, so I'll kind of play what I have uh, done to this so you don't forget. So remember, this was the original. Oops. Go back to the beginning. Her voice is softer than silent night. And then this was the edited version. Oops, I have everything muted. Sorry about that. So this is the edited version. So I'll just kind of toggle back and forth. Her eyes are brighter than the sky. But she says that I'm not quite her type. Oops. 
So I don't know if you noticed uh, what I kind of did on this thing. So just to kind of briefly overdo it and go back over it, um, because I was able to separate the different instruments. So you have your drum pattern here. So I kind of solo these. Let's give you a snare. Give you a kick drum. And this percussion option, honestly, it just sounds like more uh, of the uh, timbre and stuff that are attached to the drums. Um, but because it separated those independently, I can almost edit the audio like it's MIDI. So I copied the kick drum. Um, let's see here. It's kind of a it's another thing I kind of noticed. I have a hell of a time trying to select stuff sometimes. So yeah, I was able to copy the kick and change the drum pattern. So you'll see it goes into like thirds. So we're back to the beginning here. So just listen to just the drums. So then the original, just focus on the drums. One, two, one, two, one, two. And I was able to change that into like a different pattern of drums there. Boom, boom, clap. Boom, boom, clap. Boom, 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 clap. So that was kind of cool that I'm able to kind of literally within the song itself manipulate the audio. Uh, that's very, very cool. Um, again, you can do something similar in Melodyne, uh, but the algorithm they use to separate there is a, sounds a little different than this. Um, and then the harmonies were really, really easy to kind of create. So, like I mentioned before, you can click one button to create a harmony. So if I click this, made it a third, I can go up an octave. And don't, again, this way you're... I like going an octave down, so it's pretty realistic. So another way that you can create a harmony is literally by copying the audio. So that's what I did for this this example here. So I use this little selector tool here, the move tool. You can also resize it. They say you know dragging from the end of the note can make it smaller. If I wanted, I can shrink this down, and it just says it really quickly. Um. But yeah, what I used with this was I clicked it, I hit Command C to copy, I clicked out of it, uh, hit Command V to paste. So now I made a copy right on top of the original. So I dragged it up. So I'm just gonna go a little higher so you can see. So I'm gonna delete that for now. But yeah, that's what I did to make this harmony. So because I did that, it's on its own separate um, thing. So I can adjust the volume, I can pan it. Uh, I used a separate tool they have on here under the uh, apply pattern tool. So this, I wish it was a little clearer too. Uh, you know, if you're not into audio and you don't know what all this means, this might be a little confusing. But essentially, the more you move the slider to the right, let me just... Uh, I'll bring that piece of audio back so it's a little clearer. So I wish I could solo this too. Let's see the option here. There you go. So with this, uh, where'd it go? What do they call this? The pattern tool. So if you adjust this period slider, you'll see the waves the waveform kind of change. It's more of a legato note. It takes a longer time for the note to to go up and down. I'll undo that. Uh, 
You just saw that in real time. I didn't do anything. I hit Command Z to undo it, and for some reason it uh, closed out on me. Okay, so let's no! see this in real time, folks. All right, so let's. Oh boy, folks! All right, so <laughs> I don't know what just happened. I was trying to do a review on this thing and give it its uh, props, and it it just like lost all the data I did. So we're starting from uh, scratch, apparently. So. <laughs> that is crazy frustrating. All right, I'm trying to wrap my head around what just happened right now, and wow! All right, uh, select. Yes. So under this effects, uh, little tab here, this little first box, you can choose harmony. If you select it out first, Silent. go. Use the word night. So to create a harmony is really easy. You just select harmony and it can do it in thirds. So you can go up a third, an octave, two octaves. You can go down, uh, down an octave, down two octaves. Sounds okay. So let me, I'm gonna bring that back up a little bit. More realistic. As I was trying to say in my, <laughs> first part of this video uh it kind of sucks that you can't adjust the harmony that's created you can adjust the audio the original by using this little tool here uh, the pattern tool so these sliders allow you to adjust basically the legato or staccato version of this note so if i have this period slider uh slid to the right i'll just do that extremely all the way so it makes a longer note if I move it to the left. You, you see it go, the pattern's a lot shorter, it's a lot faster. It's a staccato note. Um, this is where it kind of gets confusing. When it comes to semitones, we're talking about the pitch. So if I go all the way to the left. If I go all the way to the right. So essentially this is your key. I wish they kind of renamed this stuff. So if you're not musically inclined and this is the first time you're opening this, this is basically the key that the voices are, for this example, the voices. The period is basically how fast the uh, note is either going, uh, like staccato or legato. And the brush, if I go all the way to the right here, So let me try to undo these things without it crashing on me again. <laughs> I'm I'm so upset. I've tried not to like lose it, but man, I did a lot of work to edit this song. <laughs> and it just it's gone. Anyway, brush. So here we go. And this says uh it doesn't really tell you what the what this does, huh? Okay. What is, what, is, what is the brush doing? I'm not sure what this is doing. Yeah, I probably wouldn't do that on the main voice. So this is where I would create a copy. So I'm going to get rid of that harmony. There's no way to actually like clear it, it doesn't look like. Other than selecting like its default again. Is there an option to like? Okay, I wish there was like an option to control click or right click or something and clear that out But instead you just kind of click back to where it originally was so I'm gonna copy Click out of it paste. I'm gonna move this up So now I'm gonna add that little uh, warble So it sounds a little crazy like that, but together it sounds a little better. So it is a little too loud, and here's where I wish they had that gain option I was telling you about. Uh, they kind of do under volume. I wish there was a uh, like a tool here instead of having to click over here, like how Melodyne has. Um, 
uh, but you click on volume and this even to this this little window looks a little wonky to me like I get what it's supposed to do and it works it's just not super user intuitive so yeah I'd rather have like a percentage uh, like a gain knob instead of these little sliders this looks like a parametric like EQ or something like a, a, a graphic EQ I gotta like play around with these I don't know I don't know I guess it I mean it works <laughs> I kind of wish it wasn't this design but yeah if you want to get rid of them kind of so kind of right click nope I think you have to drag it down nope how do you clear this out Okay, dragging it kind of off, off its little screen there. Okay, well, yeah, I don't need it to kind of gradually go down and up. Oh boy, here we go. See, you guys, I was trying to do like a really cool review, <laughs> but essentially, think of this like in Pro Tools. This would be like your audio suite plugin or effect. So I want to lower the gain down so I can. Basically, you have to lower these below this line. This is like your default, uh, the, the audio level that's playing at. So, above, you know, below would be quieter, above would be louder. So, I can't tell how much it's lowering or lifting it, which I wish there was a percentage thing somewhere. So, I knew, you know, this is, I'm lowering it by 5 dB, by 3 dB, or something. But uh, there's lines. So, I kind of have to play it by ear. Um, so when you're happy with your adjustment, which I can't preview, <laughs> which is another silly thing. I wish there was like a, so if I can kind of preview if I do this, let's see. Nope. That, so I can move this out the way. So it's not even, it's not previewing the effect. Okay, so our preview button does not preview the change until I apply it, apparently. So I'm going to lower it by however much this is, because, again, there's no percentage. <laughs> so I'm going to say apply. And you'll see the, the waveform kind of changed on the tail end of this. It's, it lowered down the volume. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this a lot more so we can actually see it a little easier. So as I lower this, the waveform gets a little duller in color. It's not as bright. It's indicating it's getting quieter. So it's a little too quiet for me. Uh, so I'm going to Command Z, undo that. So I'm going to lower it by whatever this is. Again, I wish there was a percentage thing or some kind of numbers. So I knew how much I'm dropping it down by. And another thing I wish they had was an option to save a preset. So if I knew I had to drop, you know, my vocals by a certain percentage throughout the whole song, it'd be convenient to kind of uh, have a preset here. But they don't have an option to save one. It says custom, but how do I? I don't. Okay, this. Can I make another one? How do I make another one? I can't make another custom preset. Okay, so I wish there was an option to save custom presets. If, since you give me the option to add all these, you know, points and make my custom little lines, it'd be nice to save that as a preset, right? That's that's one thing. Uh, just just a suggestion. <laughs> you take it or leave it. Uh, but anyway, so let me click out of here. So yeah, uh, there's not even an option to go back to my defaults. Like, why is there no default thing here? All right, I'm closing that out. Brighter than the sky. So if I wanted to, I can go out, you know, throughout this whole song. Or if I wanted to just select all the voice and apply that, I guess I can hit the little voice button there, select all my voices and apply this, it seems like. Is that an option? Can I do that? Oh, it looks like I can. My, it's trying. It's, it's chugging along. Okay. So let's rewind. Her voice is softer than silent nights. Her eyes are brighter than the sky. But she says that I'm not quite her type. I know 
it's a natural to want something so much. So next thing is the siblings. So, um, there we go. That's the harsh S I'm hearing. So I'm supposed to have some repair tools here. The clean repair. So you have tone hum, limit foreground, uh, overtone levels. I'm just, okay. Is there an option to DS? Quantize, I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. I see slide pitch. Format, reverb, delay, reverse. I'm looking for a DSer. Do they have one? I guess a high pass would be the cl closest thing they have here. Do you want some? Do you want some? Do you want some? It'll actually be a low pass. Filter another high pass. Do you want some? Do you want some? Do you want some? Okay. I'm looking. <laughs> I don't see that option. Uh, yeah, this is in real time, folks. I'm, I wasn't trying to like do any trickery editing. I guess I could just delete that. Let's see here how that sounds. Ooh, that sounds crazy. So, I want to get rid of that harsh S. Do they have a limiter? So speaking to one of the reps, they wanted me to do a honest review with this updated stuff. Clean. Uh, let's see, effects. Sound, I don't want to reverse anything. I don't need to match it to anything. All I want is a DSer. Where is it? A harmonic editor, I guess. And even this is kind of confusing. I'm not, okay, all right. So, so, okay. So this is a little. How do I paint sound? I don't want to erase the sound. I just want to lower it down. Adjust level tool. So let's say by I don't know 15 decibels. All this. So I want to lower that down. That didn't do anything. Did I miss something? It's an apply button. Okay. I, I honestly don't hear much of that note removed. Okay. So if I had to suggest, I would have a native DSer in here. Uh, I'm looking, I was trying to give the benefit of the doubt, like maybe I'm just not f seeing it immediately. I wish there was a designated native DSer though, because this is a little tricky. Man, all right, I'll have to break this into the part two because this is getting a little long and I had intended to show you what I had edited, but as you saw, this whole session just crashed and I lost my edits <laughs> all right so stay tuned for part two what's up everybody so this is going to be part two of my review of rip x by hit and mix their deep audio application uh so i'm going to kind of demonstrate how you can kind of remix a song within the uh, waveform itself within the stereo track uh, so you don't need stems to actually remix the song and arrange things so this is very cool and unique to this application. Like I said, it's similar to like a hybrid of Melodyne and Isotope RX, uh, but it kind of does it in its own unique way. 
So I wanted to kind of show you in uh, addition here that, you know, I didn't change any of the waveform. It literally was just a stereo track. Uh, but if you look a little closer here, if I go towards the beginning, um, you can kind of see the waveforms are slightly different because I actually rearranged stuff. I moved around the, the kicks, the snare, and uh, so where you see like the peaks on this waveform are slightly different. That's because I actually changed the arrangement within the stereo track. So I wanted to kind of A, B the before and after, and you can kind of, uh, I'll kind of go into detail of what I did in here. So let's play the before. Again, this is a song called Day and Night by Stompbox Music. So this is the original. Maybe back to the beginning. Her voice is softer than silent night. And then the rearranged version. Let me mute this. Her voice is softer than silent night. Back to the original. Her eyes are brighter than the sky. Her eyes are brighter than the sky. But she says that I. But she says that I'm not quite her type. something so much she I know it's a natural to want something so much she wanted more and more but it's never So I think you kind of get the gist of it. So yeah, I did quite a few different things here. So I ended up going into the, uh, what they separated as the kick. I relabeled this as a snare and kick drum. Um, and I kind of rearranged some of the percussive parts of this in the intro. So let me go back to the beginning. Um, let me solo some of this stuff. Uh, but last time I must have hit something where I overwrote the original, which I don't know why they have that as an option even, uh, because it's kind of a destructive editing method, which I'm not in favor of when it comes to any application, uh, honestly, because it's just such a pain in the butt. If you mess up, it's hard to go back. But anyway, I was able to click on this layer and under their little drop down menu here, I chose the harmony and anything you add will show up here, which is kind of cool. Uh, so if you kind of lose track of what you may have added, so I can click on that category. I don't have anything added with this particular uh, sound. But if I click on this one, you can see I added a delay to that actually. So yeah, I ended up harmonizing this instrument. So I dropped it down two octaves. And this piece actually is later in the song, but I kind of copied that throughout earlier in the track because uh, I just like the sound of it. And I added a delay to it. So I added a one fourth delay. So one thing I wish it had, as I mentioned before, you know, some things I, I like about this program, some things I think they can improve. Again, this is really cool, but I wish it had a separate option so I can adjust how long that lasts, like the sustain of the delay and the volume of the delay. I don't see an option for that. If there is, please let me know in the comments below. Um, next, I kind of rearranged along with that. Um, so I kind of went periodically throughout this and deleted 
uh, parts of this um, instrument there just to kind of create more dynamics within the song itself and to kind of emphasize certain phrases and words. So much. I like doing that when I'm mixing just you don't necessarily need to have like additive editing I like reductive editing so to make things stand out I kind of remove instruments or you know you create your little drops or whatever you want to call it uh, so I did that with uh, this instrument as well as some of the kicks um, and in my AB comparison you saw I copied and pasted some of the kick drum and snare drum around here but I also removed it in certain parts of the song to make parts uh, stand out So originally there was a snare there, I believe, but again, we don't have the option to kind of look at the original. I wish they have that here so I can kind of, you know, A, B compare the original versus the, the uh, modified version. But there was like just a repeated pattern of the kick and snare, just the one, two, boom, clap, boom, clap, but they don't have that here. But anyway, I removed it. So it's missing there and there I know it's an to kind of make, you know, emphasis on that word. Um, I wish there was a native deesser, like I mentioned in my previous video, because it would have helped a lot. I know it's a natural. I noticed when I uh, had made harmonies, it you know duplicates stuff, so it also duplicated the S, and it's kind of hard to remove that harsh noise. Um, if they just had like a deesser and a built-in EQ that's a little bit more straightforward to use, I would definitely rate this a lot higher than I currently am. Um, again, this is a great program. You know, I don't regret paying for it. It's a wonderful program. It's just there are certain things I wish it had to make my workflow a lot uh, easier. I also rearranged the bass within this. Again, this is like some sci-fi level stuff. It's really impressive, but you're able to copy and paste. So if I wanted to copy this bass, it actually was a shorter bass and I just extended it by clicking and dragging so I can shorten that up. <laughs> But I made it longer. I copied this bass by hitting Command C, and I can go anywhere I want in the song. Paste it by hitting Command V. So I can rearrange this again. This is really cool. You're manipulating audio like it's a MIDI track. Um, again, uh, Melodyne does something similar, different algorithm, slightly different uh, tone and uh, overall sound. The percussion and snare and kick, I like how they have it arranged where it's just at the bottom. Although I kind of wish you can extend this window up slightly because it kind of gets a little tricky because I did notice sometimes uh, what they have under percussion would be parts of the snare or the kick uh, in the bottom here. But knowing that, you know, all my percussion is going to be on the bottom saved me time trying to navigate and find it. Uh, you know, this particular beat didn't have like a hi-hat and toms and all that other stuff, but uh, knowing that your percussion is in a certain area, it helps you navigate and find that uh, particular sound if it's troublesome and you want to tinker with it. And using that harmony um, option, so I would click the voice, create a harmony, kick, uh, you know, same thing. Um, I found a combination of duplicating it so what I would do is I'd preview the voice, right? I'd create the harmony. So this is uh, octave down. So I would copy the voice, uh, a whole separate um, piece of audio and move it to where the har harmony was generated. So it kind of, you know, I had the same harmony, but since it's on its own layer, then I was able to manipulate it further by creating a harmony off of that. And then also being able to have the option to apply delays or reverbs, which is really cool. But again, hopefully in future releases, there's an option where you can manipulate what's created. Because uh, if it does that, then like that's it's already amazing. But that's like a legit game changer because I can create a harmony on the spot within seconds and then be able to manipulate it independently, make a different vibrato or volume and pan it and stuff. That'd be amazing, but currently it doesn't have that option. So the workaround I found was to duplicate the audio file, and then you're able to, you know, move it around where the harmony would be generated. And then within this, again, uh, as a reminder, this part here, think of it like your audio suite plugins and Pro Tools. So I can click on it, and then if I want to lower the volume, I click on the volume option, 
and I wish there was a knob here so bad or like a preview button, but basically if I move this line above the dotted one, it makes it louder. If I move it below, it makes it quieter. I don't know by how much because there's no numbers in decibels to let you know how much, so you kind of have to play it by ear. So I kind of just load it in increments. Uh, by hitting apply, you'll see the change. So if I move this window out, I'm going to undo this. Video. If I hit apply, 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 you saw how it went uh, from being really bright to a little darker because it's indicating to you that it's uh, making its change, just lowering the volume. Um, same thing with the panning. So I kind of went throughout the song. So this, these were harmonies generated with the program. I can tell this one, I did the technique I told you where I copied the audio itself. So initially I made the harmony generated through this program and I liked where it placed it. So I made a duplicate of this and moved it to that layer. So I was able to, you know, mess with that independently, but I also used the harmony generator thing and created a harmony that's higher. So a higher octave and lower octave. So you get get that really nice sound but if I wanted to uh, because it's on its own layer I can you know pan it if I wanted to I hit apply spell. now it sounds like it's coming out the left side um, it's just really nice to be able to manipulate manipulate this independently um, moving right along so just so you can kind of see all the edits involved with this so again these are generated through the program through the little generator thing um, and I use that same technique to find the right key where our harmony should be placed. So I believe that was like an octave up. Oh, that might have been an octave up. And then this, uh, and this kind of playing around, I made another duplicate and kind of found like the sweet spot of where a nice harmony would sound. So. And then panning those left and right by like 20%. So one more thing I wish they had here, again, you can't really save presets, which is so frustrating to me. <laughs> I don't know why that's, it's, you know, it says presets, but you can't save your own. It's, it's a little counterintuitive. But anyway, um, again, with this, there's no numbers, so you can't really know by how much percentage it's moving around. I, I can move this and that's, it moves around there. That's cool, but I kind of wish there was like a knob. And your max, it looks like it's a uh, 43. Uh, range is hard left, 45, top hard right, 45. So yeah, I think it maxes out at like 45 degrees. Um, it's, it's cool. <laughs> I kind of wish there was an option, uh, again, with a like a knob where I can manipulate this. Um, Otherwise, I'm playing around with different lines and trying to find the right spot, which gets a little uh, tricky sometimes. But anyway, I use that to pan different things. And being that I panned it, it made you know different parts of the voice stand out a lot. So I had to make sure, in addition to panning it, I had to drop the volume down so it blends a little smoother. Um, So a part of doing the engineering is if you do your job right, it's not super noticeable. Uh, it's kind of funny, but yeah, if you if you're if you do it well enough, you shouldn't really hear the sound stand out too much. Um, and I know this is kind of a a rushed mix, even though this took me like quite some time to do. Uh, if I did it even more uh, smoothly, it wouldn't be super noticeable. So that's when I see so maybe I want a harmony there just click this button once and then every time I change this uh, little slider here it will preview the change so see if I if you had the option to lower that in volume I would but because I don't I'm gonna leave that alone so I'm take that off. So 
So I also did that with some of the instruments. Not a lot because um, some of these are kind of hard to hear. It gets a little too messy if I keep adding harmonies everywhere. So I might add it to that. So again, I can either copy it by hitting Command C, wouldn't select it, and hit Command B. Pastes, pastes it right on top, and I can move it up. So you can do it that way. I'm going to Command Z to undo, Command Z, undo, Command Z. Okay. I'll use this harmony button. So I moved it up by a third. I'll create a harmony and a third. So let's see if I move it. Because there's so much going on here, it kind of gets lost, honestly. So I'd probably have to take stuff out so that I can stand out a little bit. But it, it's that easy to create harmonies, which is like, it's really cool. Like right here, I took a lot of the instruments out just so I can emphasize the words here because it was getting so cluttered and I felt like need needed a little breath from all the um, noise. I can actually probably go further and I'd probably delete this. So. Gonna have like full acapella breakdown right here with drums. I'll delete that. I'm just making room for the voice. Get rid of that. So now it's just drums and voice. There's a few bass notes in there too though. And here's an example of copying the bass over. So that originally wasn't in the song, just boom, boom, boom. But because it is so easy to, you know, create your harmonies or uh, copy things over, I was able to add that. And also got rid of the snare and duplicated the kick over so it lands on there on the one. And if you wanted to, I mean, I don't know why you would, but you can copy this over. Paste. So, another thing I would suggest. Uh, because I don't see it right now, is having the option to toggle on and off the snapping. Uh, I don't know if that's even a thing here, but like when you're trying to slide notes over, I don't see an option to be able to toggle it on and off, which, you know, if I'm trying to get real, I can see it snapped right there to this um, line right here, but sometimes I don't want that, so I don't know if there's an the option somewhere around here where I can untoggle that. Uh, click to drag note. Okay, yeah, I, I couldn't find it. If it is on here again, leave it in the comments. But an option to toggle on and off snapping would be great. Um, moving right along, I think that uh, it's gotta be gotta be the fact that I can, you know, add a whole different line of reverb or delay. In a, in a completely mixed song is really uh, incredible, honestly. So I'm going to do that here. I'm going to copy. Let's see, get the voice. Make sure it's selected. Yep. So I'm going to say harmony. Maybe not that high. So what I have been doing, so I uh, uh, selected that, I kind of see what the placement of that would be. So I'm going to make a copy, say Command C, Command V, I'm going to move it to where that actually is. And then I'm going to basically remove the generated harmony now. 
Take that off. Okay. So now it's where the harmony would be generated, but now I can manipulate that independently. So I'm going to lower the volume down. Apply like twice, roughly. And then I'm also going to add a... Let me just show how that's selected. I can add a uh, delay. One fourth sounds pretty good to me. And I'm also going to pan this. So if you drag it to the left or right, it clears this out. I didn't state that in the previous video, but rereading this uh, to clear the points. But again, I wish there was just a button to click clear it and then uh you know like a default option which is kind of silly so i'm going to pan that a little bit to the right uh, apply that and now because it's panned it's going to be a lot more obvious so i want to lower this volume further so i'm going to click that about twice so now let me rewind a little further So now I have a delay as well as uh, panning and volume change on this completely you know, generated uh, harmony. Uh, you can go a little further. They have an option for vibrato. If I change it, you know, crank that up a little bit. It sounds a lot more warbly. So you can do that. It's like a, think of it like globally affecting this uh, audio. Or I can manually do that with this the tool I was showing you in the video previously. Brush, the way that I, when I was playing around with this further, I understand it it's similar to like a, think of it like a brush size in like Photoshop. That's kind of how I understand it. The furthest to the right you move it, think of it like your brush getting larger. The, you know, to the further to the left, think of your brush getting smaller. Essentially, that's what's happening. So now it's warbly. So one more thing I want to add is maybe uh, take that right off. you have access to redo the song and you know the artist is available i'd advise to do that but perhaps you don't you know the song's recorded it's it's um you know the artist can't record again for some reason they left the studio whatever it may be but you want to add a harmony this is a great program to kind of do that uh i found the isotope rx did a much better job with repairing uh clicks and pops and stuff and when i did the repair um, let's see if I can actually load this up here. So this was an interview for a podcast I was editing, and the voice itself had a lot of distortion. What they gave you access to? Well, uh, most of it. Distorted right there. Well, well uh, most of it. And this is after me kind of playing around with this. I retired. I worked with them either in research. Project. So the problem with this, it wasn't that there was clipping on some of these parts. There was actual audio loss. So these parts that are dark, there's actually no audio. So if I pull that up in uh, like Adobe Audition, you'll see that there's a blank area where the waveform should be. And I didn't see a part to like actually fix that. I was looking around here and hoping one of these tools can do that. So what I would do was make a slice, which they have a tool here, a little razor Either. tool, but it's not as accurate as I'd like. Either. But basically make a slice and then slide this over but there's no option to really crossfade it, you know? So there's there's definitely room for improvement with smaller things when it came to repair. I wish there was an option to toggle between like a window for repairing audio and a mix window, like kind of like how Adobe Audition has. So they have their, you know, their main window and you have your mixer window. I wish there was that for like repairing and mixing because um, that would be amazing if you had that option because then you'd have specific tools for DSing and etc. Um, but until that time comes, 
you know, I really like this program, but there's definitely room for improvement. I'll probably hop in a part three for this video um, and dive a little further into this restoration part of it. For the time being, thanks for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and check out part three.